And so, I'm picking GNOME to do app as a horror example, only because it's an official GNOME app and without much of requirements. And before we proceed to the blaming, here's a super fast demo from Nightly Flatpak. <laughs> Langsy and GTK4 Toolkit, and the app is pretty much a rewrite of the old to-do, so consider it a baby app. Okay. Inbox and create a new list calling it hello, because I have huge creativity. And next we'll do some tasks. Like 1, 2, 3, with creativity beyond any imagination. If we select a task we can date it, for example set it for today. And then the info bar will let us know we have tasks we need to complete ASAP. Of course we can also add some more details inside a task, but it's only text, so it's pretty basic functionality. But we can do some coloring. For example set this list to red, although that wasn't much of impressing. More interesting is the star animation. Which reminds me that Google Summer of Code sponsors Libadweta for an animation API. One last thing maybe is that this app, like almost every new GNOME app, is adaptive. And apart the adaptive part, all those GTK4 apps are extremely responsive, you can really tell on use. However I'm not totally sure how this info bar can work on smaller screens, although that's far by being the horror problem. So what's the most important ability of such app? Obviously the user should be able to store and sync their tasks somewhere online. The UI hooks may miss, but when we create a new list, we are going to have options to use some cloud providers. One option is the next cloud, but realistically this isn't either a common, or any good enough choice. And the other choice is to use a to-do list account. So the way I see it, all this work pretty much means nothing, and all it matters is really the to-do list service. I'm not even sure why it's called a GNOME app and not a to-do list client. And it's happening all over the place. For example Google is sponsoring GNOME Health, when in reality is just a client for Google Fit. And one of the problems of developing client apps, is that the original developers will always develop better apps because they control the APIs. And those apps will most likely been developed with you know it framework, that fully works on Linux and everywhere else already. So everything else will just be irrelevant and worthless. And one day we will just silently update to another operating system, and we won't even understand the difference. And so I'm wondering, what's the purpose of GNOME organization? To offer a community desktop and cloud logins we can trust, or to develop clients for Google and Facebook services, 